This video is gonna be how to pull the power head for the 135 horse, the 200 horse, 60 degree V6, e and the Ficht power heads. But it does cover a bunch of ranges, pretty much all the V6s and stuff of the G1s. It will be similar for the G2s and the older ones as well, but this obviously just has a lot more stuff on it. All right, welcome back. Today's video, we're gonna be working on something special. If you guys have been keeping track, I have a 1974 Robalo 230 center console and I bought something special for it. This is one of two engines that I've purchased for it. That is a 175 E-Tech 2007. And in this video, we're gonna be pulling this out and starting to get it stripped and pulling the power head off of it. So this video is gonna be a tutorial. It's gonna be like my older videos where I did that, but I'll go over it more once we get it out. But for now, we're just gonna get this thing on the stand, get set up, and then we'll start taking the power head out. So as you guys know, I bought two of these. They're gonna be going on my center console. One of them runs fine and is perfect. This one is the problem child. Apparently it still ran when I uh, ran when I was taken off. That's what they always say. But if you come around to the other side, if you guys take a look up here, you'll see there's a fat hole, but it's not in the block, but it's in the actual like a uh, lower intake manifold is what you would call it. So because of that, we're gonna be swapping out the power head. So the price for me to replace just that one section is like 400 bucks, or I can get a long block for this for 500 bucks. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. The other thing that I already have done, which I might try and get some footage of because I recorded it on the bore scope, is I scoped out all the cylinders, seeing if there was any metal. And the bottom four were okay, but the top two had metal in them. I'm sure the thing would have still ran, but there's scoring on the cylinders and the tops of the pistons have a little bit of metal in there. So because of that, I'm just gonna go ahead with a whole new power head. And then uh, all the accessories will remain the same. We'll take them off and put them back on. But that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. We'll be taking off the power head. The next video that we do on this will be stripping the power head and then the last video will be reassembling. But I will in the future take this power head apart and probably send it out to get bored or something. And then uh, I'll do a video on assembling it with all the torque specs and everything. So we're actually not gonna pull the power head today, but the next clip you guys will see is when I actually am because I forgot my tools. And I did buy a full tool set here. Those aren't my tools and they're missing a couple things. And I like my nice ratchets, but but once we do get it on the bench, that's gonna be when I can actually strip it and we'll do it all with nice lighting and very nice direction. So we'll see you guys another day. All right, we're gonna get this power head off of this motor. So before we start, there's a few things that we need to talk about. Obviously, this is kind of assuming the motor's already off the boat. If you're doing it with it on the boat, there's a few things that you need to disconnect that you won't see here. Positive battery cable, negative battery cable, your gear selector and throttle cables, those need to go. And then your main engine harness, those should already be disconnected as well as fuel line and oil line. You'll see those because they're what's connecting it. That was weird. That's what's connecting it to the boat already. So once you have that, you'll be where I'm at. So there's a plastic cover that goes on the top of the motor. I already have it off because I had to get the uh, lifting tool. I'll put a link to this in the description if you guys need to uh, pull yours, but it is a little pricey, but it's the only thing that can lift these because there's no lifting points. It's literally one bolt that threads in the top of the crank. Now that we're at that point, the first thing that we're gonna take off is the air silencer cover. We're gonna get this off and then we're gonna take off these rear shrouds. So I'm going to grab a 3 8 socket and a quarter inch and pop both of these bolts off. So with both of those loose, we'll pull them all the way out. That rubber came out with that one. But the entire air silencer comes out and you'll see we have the, what is that map or intake sensor? And we're gonna unplug this or take the whole thing out. We're gonna leave that. The important thing when you're taking these power heads apart is to have everything labeled. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna figure out where to put them for now down there. 
And what I do is I use these little parts bags and I put all relating things. So like my intake manifold bolts, the air silencer bolts will go in here and I will label them with everything that's in the bag, but not too much. So like I would only do air system parts in this bag, label them and keep moving. And what else I like to do is I'll get in the notes app on my phone or on a notepad and I'll write down the order that I take things apart. Obviously I have the manual and everything, but I write the order. So when I'm putting it back together, I can go back in the same order and I don't skip something. So I'm gonna write this down. Yeah, that looks like dog shit, but I'll be able to read that. All right, next step. We have, I believe I counted eight of these. They're gonna be uh, 5 16 bolts. Obviously my cowl broke a little bit in transport, so this pulled out, but we're gonna have all these 5 16 bolts. So there's one there, one under here, one here, one here, and then they're gonna be on the, on the back of the cowling. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll get those out and we'll get the lower cowl split and that's gonna give us access to everything we need underneath the motor to get the power head pulled up. So this is probably a good opportunity to show you what these actually look like. On the back side, molded into the plastic, there's just this little nut and then this threads into it. And that's all these are that are holding these together. So we'll get them all off. So for this to actually pop loose, I'm gonna put all these bolts in a bag. There's a few things we need to disconnect. One of them is gonna be the trim switch on the other side. There's gonna be the exhaust hose and the piss hose. And uh, then we'll be ready to get these off. All right, so now we can start separating these two. Wow, there's a lot of metal down there. <laughs> and uh, if you follow your trim switch down here, you follow this wire up. You're gonna have a plug right here, little leather pack. Lift and pull. This is gonna come off with the cowling. Coming over to the front, give it a nice little pull. And there's the starboard side. And you get to clean out all the metal from your blown up power head. So we're gonna set these on this, this mercury. Obviously we're having rude guys around here, but I will have some videos on the mercs. Real talk, the mercs aren't that bad. Now we'll come over to the port side of the motor. Same thing, give her a good yank. On this side, you have all the wiring for your actual power trim. So there's gonna be switch power, which will pop off. Then you'll have another one right here. Come on. And the last one, this is gonna be your main power feed over on this side of the motor. So same thing, lift up, pull the wire out. And what we're gonna have to do is run all this wiring. There's this grommet in here that splits in half. Do not lose this because you're gonna be upset when you have the gaping hole in the middle. So I'm gonna shove that back in just like that. Our wiring's free. That's gonna stay with the trim pump and our side panels out. Obviously now we have much better access to everything. So the next steps are gonna be, we have to disconnect all of the exhaust bracketry, the bolts. I believe we're gonna have to take this off. So you can see our main tower bolts. There's gonna be six of them. And then one down here in the middle, which is why we're gonna have to take this off. You really don't have to, but since we're gonna mount the power head on something, we're gonna want this off and the shift linkage. All right, so another tip that I have, I know nobody wants to hear this, but label your wires. So these are gonna be trim. So I'm just gonna label them with a little piece of tape. When we go to take the harness off, which is gonna be in a different video, when we actually strip the power head, it's really important to do this because you'll be able to lay out the harness like it was, and then I'll know, okay, this goes port lower, and that's gonna be for all of our trim. Same thing on this side. I know that the big green and blue wires are gonna be for trim, but I'm just gonna do trim. Plus, and now next time I'll know. Alrighty, so next step, we're in the back. This is the VST, vapor separator tank. Just below it, this is our exhaust that I was talking about. You have a water overflow hose coming from the VST going down, and this is where your little piss hole is. Pop it out, just pops straight back. It's a little push fitting, and we're gonna get this out of the way. Next up, we have the two clamps that are gonna be connecting the actual exhaust to the power head. They're Whitaker clamps. What I like to do is take a, I call these picks, people call them hose tools, whatever you wanna call them. I'll try and show you on this side. But I like to get them in the middle of that little Whitaker and pry up on them. And just like that, you pry up on it. This clamps off. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. You can do this with a side cutter just too, but get the tab up and pry it off. Now wiggle them and get them off. And with the overflow hose off, the entire unit comes out. And this is that rear bolt that I was talking about that goes up into the power head. 
We're gonna be on the port side of the power head. In the front, we're gonna be working on the shift linkage. So you can use a flat head or a 3 8 socket, but if you go in there, it's a shoulder bolt, which means there's threads in the beginning of it, and the end is just a pin. So we're gonna remove this entirely, and the power head's gonna be separated from the shift linkage. This is what that bolt looks like. So you can see there's threads in the front, and then it's just a pin in the back. If you guys were doing like a water pump and you're trying to drop the lower unit, this is what has to come out for the lower unit to drop. Do not lose this. So this is gonna be the part that might be hard to do at home. We need to support the power head for the next few steps because it's about to come out. So obviously, if you don't have a gantry like this at home or a forklift, what I've used is a cherry picker. If you're in a garage and you have nice, uh, what are those called? If you have nice trusses, uh, fucking throw a ratchet strap around there and wish for the best. But we need to be really careful when we lift it up and you need to make sure that's not gonna break. So obviously I have this nice gantry that was built by yours truly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this just until there's pressure. We just want it to take up the slack in the chain. We don't want it to actually be lifting anything because it's gonna make these bolts harder to come out and it's gonna make things pop. And when we pull this off, we want it to come straight up. We have to be really gentle with it. So we'll go up just till the slack's out. Slacks out. That's all we gonna do. Next up, you're going to need a 9 16th socket. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coming from the exhaust housing up into the power head. And we're gonna pop all these guys out. They're not crazy tight, which is a good thing. Cordless ratchets, we're not cavemen. Get one, use it. But if you wanna feel like a man, do it with an open end wrench. <laughs> How's your day been? Wasn't talking to you. Bet you guys didn't think that you were gonna be pulling your power head, did you? Thank God this guy decided to make some extremely well-made detailed video. I mean, if I were, if I were in your situation, I'd probably drop a like or maybe even subscribe. Maybe even pick up a shirt or something to really say thank you. Just saying. Backstory on this motor, it was on a 28 foot boat it had these twin 175s on it. They claimed it wasn't used in salt water. If you look at my lower unit, this girl's been around the block, so I'm probably gonna end up painting the lower unit and kind of the mid shaft or the case here. But yeah, 700 some hours on this one, popped a hole in it, apparently it runs. Center rear bolt. <laughs> yeah, baby. These are different length. I'm sure you'll remember this, but that rear center bolt is shorter than the rest of them. Now all we got left for down below is the three on the port side of the power head. Last one from the bottom. All right, last bolts out from the bottom. We're gonna bag these up and then we'll start working on the top bolts. Just gonna take up a little more pressure on it, make sure that we're supported. You are gonna need a 3 8 open end wrench. Yes, I know it sucks, you gotta use an open end, but there's a bolt here coming downward and then in this corner over here, there's another one and the same on the other side. So four of these little three eighths, let's get them out. There's one, come on out, old girl, bingo. Number two, look at that, a little corrosion. Us freshwater guys aren't used to this buffoonery. Same thing, port side, bang and bang. Starboard side, sorry, my bad. That one's on me, fellas. Now, this one has a ground strap on it. Make sure that when we reassemble this, that ground strap doesn't go missing, because otherwise, you gonna have some electrolysis. All right, so this was a good example of almost getting screwed. This starboard rear one started slipping with the open end wrench, so I grabbed a little quarter inch, three eighths, and thank God I got it free. If you guys have these really corroded, heat up down here. Get the torch on it. You don't need to go oxyacetylene, but maybe with the propane torch, heat it up a little bit and try and get them to bust free, because if we were to strip this, we would be SOL. If you guys do end up stripping one of these, cut the head off of it with like a uh, cutoff wheel or something or a sawzall. Be careful not to cut into the housing or anything, but cut the head off so you can pull the power head straight up. And then once the power head's off, you can deal with it with the vice grips or weld a nut on it or something. But luckily we could get a socket on this one. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Mm. Alrighty, the last two that we need to get this power head free are in the front. These are the front engine mounting bolts. There's one on this side and there's one on that side. To get these out, you gotta twist the motor so you can get your socket in there. And they're five eighths. Oh, 
Oh yeah, baby. That one you might not be able to get with the old quarter inch ratchet, but we have the power head supported. So this is gonna, it's gonna move a little bit when we get these off. Just keep in mind how long your socket is. I'm using a shorty because you might pinch yourself up against that. Luckily on this one, I can get it with my fingers. Before I get this all the way out, I'm gonna crack the other side free. So I'm gonna twist the motor the other way. Same thing on this side. This one looks a little more corroded. Oh yeah. So we got that one cracked as well. Big old bolts. So we got this one out. Let's do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Okay, so an important note on those front two engine mount bolts that we just took out of there. If they had a sealant on them, like a Loctite or whatever Avenrude used from the factory, throw them away and get new ones. If they didn't have any sealant on them, put some marine grease, triple guard I believe is what they use, or like 2-4-C's what I use, put the grease on them and then you can reuse them when we reassemble. But if you look here, our power head is beginning to separate. You can see it's loose there and it's loose over here. So we have our speedometer wire coming up from the lower unit. We need to get this pulled out and out of the way. That's gonna stay. I'm just gonna take a look around, make sure there's nothing else hanging on there. Now this is where you need to be really careful. This power head has to go straight up because your lower unit drive shaft, the splines are going into the bottom of the crank. So we need to make sure that it comes straight up and down and it's gonna be hard because the motor naturally wants to sit on an angle. I obviously don't have my trim all the way down. If I did, we'd be pulling straight up or pulling on a little of an angle. So I'm gonna put a little more pressure on it. And you can see we're held up in the back here. So I'm gonna take my flathead and I'm just gonna start prying around this back edge. And we're out of the guide pin now. I can see the drive shaft is still bound up, but I'm gonna pry on the rear while I lift. And just like that, for free. Now that wasn't so bad, now was it, fellas? You guys were worrying for weeks about how you're gonna rebuild your motor so you can get back out there. Easy. So there you have it. That's gonna be the end of this video on how to pull the power head off of your E-Tech. The, this is the 175 2007 E-Tech. This covers a bunch of different ranges, which I'm sure I have in the title and everything, but the next video is gonna be stripping the power head, getting all of this stuff off, so you guys could either send it out to get bored and do whatever you wanna do and rebuild it yourselves, or if you were buying a long block, which you could get off eBay or something like that, or a reman power head from somewhere, that would be stripping everything off of it, swapping power head, and then putting everything back on. So we're gonna have a disassembly video, a reassembly video, video with all the torque specs and how to put everything on and in what order and all that. So if you guys, I have videos on older power heads. If you guys have like an older Evan Root or something like that, I have videos on assembly and disassembly and stuff like that. But if you guys want to see the rest of this project, make sure to subscribe. We're going to have a lot more coming. We also have the boat building videos that we're doing as well as my regular service, which this year I'm trying to bring you guys on more of like when I get called out for a service call, I'll just film the repair and I think it's interesting. And if you guys like boats, you'll probably find it interesting but soon you'll see two of these guys on my Robalo so make sure to stay tuned if you uh, want any ST Marine merch first link down below in the description if you guys are looking for service in Wisconsin stmarinewi.com and we'll see you guys in the next one